Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm of course Big Bale, and in today's video, we mark day one of my Legends League series, and day one features Super Dragon Super Archer Clone Blimp. Now my goal here is to bring you on a journey with me to try and figure out what the best Legend League army is. So this one, as I mentioned just, it's the Super Dragon with a Super Archer cloned blimp. So similar to a Blizzard, but with clone and Super Archers. It's really strong from my practice attempts anyway. Let's see how it does in Legends League. This first attack, it's on a interesting base. It's kind of like a ring base, kind of, but not exactly. But um, yeah, this one kind of fell flat on its face right at the start because what I was trying to do was get that town hall down with the super archers. Now, unfortunately, there was way too much in the way of hit points in the way of the town hall. So the clan castle soaked up the last of those super archer hits. And there we are. Weirdly, this guy's got a super dragon in his CC, which I'm not sure what he was thinking. I'm sure that doesn't do too great when it comes to defending, especially when super dragons are actually the offensive meta. I can't imagine one super drag doing too well against, what, five, six super drags. It's not going to happen. So, weird choice of CC. But whatever, that's not my problem. So, King and Queen, they're going to see we up from three towards 12. My idea here, really, was to just try and cut out as much of the base as possible, just so I can power the super dragons in and get them towards the town hall. Whether that works or not, you'll find out pretty soon, guys. But uh, King working his way up, he's going to go down soon. But we've got the RC down at 6 o'clock. She's clearing up the 6th side. And we have just a lone minion down there. In hindsight, maybe a Super Dragon would have been great to send in with the, uh, the minion. Just to help speed that cleanup up a bit. Whatever. Can't really change what's done now, can we? So Queen makes it to the 12th side. The RC is still moving towards 9 o'clock. Has her ability. So we know that air defense is going to go down regardless. And there the Super Dragons go in. So this is my problem here. I didn't really funnel them in. I didn't funnel them in at all. And to be fair, when I saw this base and when I sent the blimp where I sent it, I wasn't banking on having to move into the Town Hall anyway. And I guarantee you, if the Town Hall had gone down, this would not be a problem at all. But we've got the Super Dragons taking out everything. The Queen's still up, working her way around the base. She has her ability as well. Admittedly, that's going to get burnt pretty soon. The Town Hall locks on, and the Nado's holding her there. It's like just pinning her down while it pounds away at her. We had one brave Super Dragon trying to make its move, but... Well, it didn't do too much, guys. It was on low health, so he tried his best. Didn't quite get there. We've got four Super Dragons up. Make that three. Make that soon to be two, I believe, as well. That multi inferno toasting. Make that one. Oh my lord, we've got one super dragon up. We've got the queen, and that town hall is still standing at almost full health. Almost. And I think it's quite clear now, guys. This is not a three star. This is one of the more painful outcomes. This is a 99% one star. And. It hurt me deep inside, but this is just one of the examples of what happens when the Super Archer Blimp doesn't get the job done. When it doesn't deliver the value that you're looking for, this can happen. Okay, and this is attack number two, and this one's on Sir Nelson. Interesting base. It's um, not a common Legends base at all, but my plan here is to drop that Blimp onto the Clan Castle. Because looking at the positioning of that CC, adjacent to where the scatter shots are, the town hall, the expos, we could potentially get a ton of value with that blimp. Whether we get the value or not, we will find out very, very soon. But we get the clones down, the rage, the invises, everything's in play, we're doing things as we're supposed to, we're keeping those invises flowing, and it's all about getting that precision timing on them. So you need to be dropping them every just under four and a half seconds. So Town Hall's being targeted. Will it go down though? Will it go down? That's the question, guys. And yes, it does. It does go down. We got actually really, really nice value from that blimp. We even triggered the Nado. You can see right there. So Nado also pulled by the Super Archers walking outside of that compartment. All right, King dropped in over at one. Baby Dragon supporting. And that was really just to try and push the King upwards. I wanted that King to work his way around counterclockwise. And I wanted the RC to work her way down. Unfortunately, I think she goes up from here. Yeah, she does. So I didn't quite get the direction I was looking for. Because I was looking to get the RC to take out this single Inferno right here. Never mind. It's all good. It's all good. 
So RC makes her way in towards the multi over at 12. We've got the baby dragon doing a little bit of casual cleanup at three. Gets taken out by an air defense. No biggie. We're fine. And we've got a really nice path for these super dragons working straight down from nine o'clock towards six. There's a little bit more work for them to do following up on that. But we're holding on to this freeze spell just because there's no immediate danger for us right now. There's nothing really for us to worry about. But when we get down to the south side, we've got an air defense, we've got an air bow, we've got the warden, we've got a single inferno. And over at three o'clock, we have that air defense that I was hoping my royal champion would have taken care of. Okay, so freeze still in hand. We've still got the queen ability available too, which is actually pretty OP. We've held on to that throughout the duration of the attack. And she's actually on full health. Yeah, she's on full health right now, guys. So this queen is living her best life at this moment in time. Single Inferno is there, the Warden's there. They're two of the biggest hitters when it comes to Super Dragons. They're two of the defenses that you want to kind of try and avoid as best you can. And there we go. Freeze goes down and that reduces any kind of damage that they were going to give as far as output down to pretty much nothing. And from here, you can see we get the job done, guys. This is going to be a three star on Sir Nelson. No really painful 99% one stars here. This was all glory from Big Vale. Ah, oh, that one felt good. It did, guys. That one really felt good. All right. So, job well done. On to the next one. And what do we have here? We have a teaser base. So, we've got a teaser with the clan castle all the way up the top. Uh, we've got scatter shots. We've got all the defending heroes up there as well. So it's a nasty top side, but very rarely will you start this blimp from the top side. Very, very rarely. And we're not going to do that any different on this occasion. So the blimp's coming in from four o'clock. It's floating over towards the uh, multi inferno. And I was a little bit worried here. I wanted it to land in that compartment just below the town hall. I kind of misplaced it. I nearly ended up having that blimp drop outside, but we get it in, we get the clones down, we get the invis, and those super archers start to fire. And the value in the position that we dropped it allowed us um, quite a lot of damage, quite a lot of value available, and we took advantage of it. So, uh, yeah, super archers getting through the town hall eventually, do they? Do they? Do they? No, they don't. Town hall sands. Rip. Rip. Okay, so the Town Hall stands, not the end of the world, but also not a great thing for us. Luckily, it's already on low health, but it is being regenerated. I didn't notice this until almost too late. Almost. So I did manage to clutch it up with the RC, as you'll see quite soon. So we've got the King and Queen over at 3 o'clock. Baby Dragon taking out those storages over at 2. And there goes the RC moving in on the Town Hall. Skeleton trap spawns. We've got the King moving in as well. And I freeze up the Town Hall and the Skeletons just so we can get the RC through the Town Hall without her getting distracted by the King. Done. Done. Town Hall down. And this is where I was like, I can't really see a great clear path to enter. So I'm just going to come in and sideswipe it, moving in towards the Eagle Artillery. So we're going to move straight to the Eagle. The Eagle is one of the bigger threats, especially since we know that we don't have any scatter shots up. The Queen's taking care of both air defences down at 6. It just seemed like the right thing to do. So Super Dragon's getting through that Eagle. Does it get another shot off? One shot from its uh, next barrage goes off. No big deal. And it lands on one of my Super Dragons. So McQueen does survive this. She's on really low health here, so the amount of value that she actually adds from this point is questionable. But the Super Dragons, we've got plenty of them. We've got five of them at the moment. And they are they're actually spread really nicely throughout the left side of the base. It's actually a really generous spread. That was more by look than design, but that's typically what you get with Super Dragons. A lot of the uh, pathing that you get from them, it's really hard to predict. Because of that sort of... What's it? It's not really chain value, is it? Like, you'll see on that uh, gold mine that they just fired at, they also damage the gold storage. That extra residual damage that you get on nearby structures, that's probably the best word for it. It uh, means that you can't easily predict what value you'll get from your super dragons at any given part of the base king goes down but he does finish my queen off super dragons get their revenge and boom seeking air man you cannot stop me <sighs> done done that is another three star guys we've had a 99 and two triples 
that's not a terrible start. The 99% one star kind of hurt me a little bit, but it's it's all part of the lesson around this attack. It's not perfect if you don't have the right way of taking down the Town Hall, if you don't have a really clean view through to it, without too much HP in the way, then that can happen. And on to attack number four, and it's on Vishnu. So what we're trying to do here, guys, is to try and get the blimp into this gap right here. It's a really unusual kind of base to see at this point in Legends, to be honest. It's an anti-3 style, and normally you're looking at box bases, ring bases. We're not seeing too much of them at the moment, which is weird. Really weird at the point in Legends that I am. So the NATO actually stopped our blimp from getting to our planned destination point, and also a little bit of sloppiness from the invises did mean that we ended up losing some archers. Was it the invises or was it the giant bomb? I'm not actually sure, to be honest. A bit of both, bit of both. We're left with two super archers for the final invis, and that's not going to get us any real value here. To be honest, at that point, I would have been smarter just to forget about it and hold on to that invis for my Sui. But it is what it is. We can't change it again. It is in the past. We just have to move on. Anyway, king and queen down over at 2.30. Um, and we're looking to try and get them inside. So we're looking to try and get them into the single inferno. So that means that our super dragon push, where's that going to come in from? Is it going to be from the eagle? Is it? Yeah, it is. That's where we're going to move in from. So we're going to go in opposite side to the town hall because I'm banking on my queen at the very least, getting that Town Hall down. King gets through the single. I was tempted to use my free spell there. Glad I didn't. The King got through okay. And the Queen will easily step up to the Town Hall. Now, I could have sent the Super Dragons in a lot earlier. I could have done. Just because, well, the pathing was there, wasn't it? I just didn't want to risk my heroes not getting to that Town Hall and ending up for one star. I, I just couldn't stand another one star. If that 99%, I don't want to see one star ever again. Alright, so Eagle down, Super Dragon's pushing through, Queen is still up, and we have a free spell left. So we got a lot of uh, Super Dragons up still, we got five of them in play. We only just lost one of them as well to a Seeking Air Mine. And we're moving into a really tough area here where we've got the Scattershot and the Warden. And unfortunately the Super Dragons that we had tasked with taking that area down got wiped out pretty quickly. Queen doing her thing. She's actually done a really nice job. If anything was the most valuable thing in the, in the attack, it was the Queen. The Queen was the MVP of this attack. Sadly, it's not enough though, guys. This one is going to turn out to be a fail. So Super Dragons are dwindling fast. They are taking out the Dark Elixir storage, which will help to speed the Queen up a little bit. So, yeah, you know, they helped, but it just wasn't quite what we needed. We didn't quite get the value we were looking for. Just because that Warden and Scattershot combination can be absolutely devastating. So if you're going into an attack using this strategy, keep that in mind. Keep in mind that Wardens, Air Defenses, and Scattershot, when combined, are absolutely devastating. Now that was actually a time fail. I forced my own Queen ability there. If I'd have had time, I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have forced the Queen ability. I would have just held on to it and used it at the last possible moment. And I believe that would have got me through the remaining structures in the base. Now the question that needs to be answered is can we get back on that three star pony? And this is actually a really generous base for me to have ended up with. This is it's exactly what we're looking for with this attack. Box bases melt like a butter to this attack. So we've got the blimp making it through. Um, one thing I will point out actually, you'll notice that we've got these uh, balloons dropped in, the warden and the blimp together. We never use a Coco Hound because it just doesn't fit into this army. And it gives you a little bit more control about where you drop the blimp. Just in case you were wondering why we do that. Okay, so looking at the value that we're actually getting from these super archers here, it's it's phenomenal. It is so, so good. We're able to take out almost everything in the core. And yeah, it's just, it's just unreal. It's unreal. So that's why box bases are absolute cannon fodder for this attack. Look at what you can carve out. All of that is gone. The entire middle of the base is gone. And yes, it used up all but one of our spells. But if you look at what's left, it's really easy to clean it up. So what we'll do, we'll drop our Sui in over at 8 o'clock. So King goes down. 
We've got the Headhunters moving in. Queen will support and help to snipe them out. The Yak's actually helping out too, so good boy, Yak. Good boy. And the Sui's just going to work its way around the base. We've got a balloon dropped in down at 6 o'clock. That was really just my last balloon. It was more as a cocoa balloon to make sure there was no immediate seeking air mines as we enter into the base with the Super Dragons. So you can see we're working one way with the Hero Sui and the other way with the Super Dragons. And we're looking to try and meet up somewhere in the middle. I was holding on to my RC because I wasn't sure where I wanted it. But then I kind of, well, I thought about it, obviously. And thought, you know what, that scatter shot, it's going to be difficult to reach my king and queen. Let's get the RC in on it. And it worked. You know, it, it may not have been insane value from the RC. In fact, she is getting quite a lot, actually. She's getting the expo down. She's going to step up and take out the air defense. You know what, actually, that was a stroke of genius. I was downplaying it a bit, but actually that was a really good play with the RC. So RC is leading the charge. She's going to fire off her ability soon, which is just going to get even more value for us. And we've got a queen on full health of ability. So that town hall, you know it's going down. You know it is. We've got plenty of super dragons up still. Queen is working away through. I'm holding on to the ability because I don't want to use it until we get that lock onto the town hall. Just in case something weird happens. There we go. Locked onto the town hall. Town hall going down. And there. It's done. It's done. Dark Elixir Storage about to get rocked. And we have a three star on Fighter from Blue Valks. Now that was a satisfying triple. After that previous fail, I kind of needed that to get my confidence back up. Now on to attack number six. And this is our first ring base of the Legends Day. Okay, so ring bases aren't a huge problem when it comes to this attack. Just because all you can do is try and chew out part of that ring or as much of it as possible. Your Sui and the Super Dragons can easily do the rest. The actual inner part of the ring is where the real danger is. So we're sending our blimp in. And we want to drop it on the Clan Castle. Boom. Done. Now we'll focus in. And look at the value we can get from here. So I'm going to pause it. You can see right here. You've got the Multi Inferno. You've got the Town Hall. You've got the Scatter Shots. You've got Air Defenses either side. You've got so much potential for those Super Archers to target here. That um, it just, it was a no-brainer. It had to be dropped there. So uh, we've got the Hound and Ice Golems coming out of the CC. Now, of course, tanky troops can be a real, real hindrance to our Super Archers. If they lock onto it, then you may have a bit of a problem. Because they'll stay locked onto it. And it'll take them probably the duration of all of your invises to get rid. But that's the value we got, guys. We chewed out that core. And the Sui is looking pretty. Pretty sweet right now. So we get the king down. He's working down towards 9 o'clock. We've got a minion up top over at 12 taking out the army camp. And yeah, we're just moving on and moving on through. Simple. Very easy. Queen can take care of the pups. Now this is where it's a slight disadvantage not having a poison. It means we take a lot more unnecessary damage than we probably should do from clan castles. But uh, it's not the end of the world. I mean, you look at it. The king took a fraction of damage. The queen took none. It's fine. It's fine, really. So king and queen are going to work their way down towards 6 o'clock. And we're just taking our time on this, guys. We're not rushing it. We've got the minion. He's taking out the army camp. Or she. I, I don't know what gender a minion is, actually. I've got no idea. But they've taken out the army camp. They're already chipping away on the gold storage. And actually, look at the value we're getting from that minion. Beautiful for two housing space. King and Queen are still working through. We get the RC dropped in at 6 as well, just to try and help out a little bit more. And here come the Super Dragons. So we're going to push the Super Dragons in from 4, 4.30, straight up towards 12, while the Queen does the rest. So the Queen's doing the rest of the cleanup over here. And this is just... But you can see already it's crushed, guys. I'm not going to try and add suspense to this one. This is a triple. Now you can see we do have an army camp over at 9 o'clock, and you'll notice that I've held a balloon back specifically for that so i'm holding on to that just until the mortar over at 12 goes down once that's gone the army camp can then be targeted by the balloon i wasn't at risk of time failing anyway i think we had about 20 seconds left by the end of this attack but um you know it's, it's always better to try and be efficient just in case something does happen who knows we could have found like 20 seeking air mines on the way to the army camp and that would have been pretty bad news for us Mortar about to go down to the Queen and Super Dragon. And there goes the balloon to finish the job. And that is a three star on Dimmy. Beautiful. Just beautiful. On to attack number seven. And we have another sort of ring base. This one's weird. And it threw me off a little bit. I'm not going to lie. 
But we're going to go in with the blimp and we're going to try and get it to land onto the clan castle. Okay, perfect. So it does get there. Beautiful. Invis goes down. The rage goes down. Double clone because we can see that wall's opened up behind the eagle. So we know the wall breakers have done their thing. And Super Archer is going to now start pumping those beautiful magical arrows all over the place. So it took them a while to actually target the town hall here. That took way longer than I was comfortable with. Town Hall does just about go down. I say just about actually, it went down pretty convincingly. And we've taken out a massive portion of this base. So from here it actually looks like a really simple cleanup job. But because we've got those multi infernos sort of boxed off either side of the Town Hall compartment, it, it's not quite as simple as it may have first looked. Now I sent that Super Warbreaker in there to open up the 9 o'clock comp. I feel that was a mistake on my part. I didn't really need to do that because I think the king with his yak would have forced a way through anyway. Queen ability is probably going to have to go off here, is it? Is it? Is it? Yes it is. Queen ability was forced. Unicorn's still alive though, so we can buff that queen back up again. King goes walkabout. We send the RC in to take over. And... I mean, so far, everything's looking pretty sweet, isn't it? I'm sure you'll agree with me. This is all looking quite good so far. We send the Super Dragons in. This is where I think I went wrong. So I think I went wrong here because I sent the Super Dragons in the same side as we had our heroes. I probably should have sent the Super Dragons in right from 12 o'clock. We had a really nice defined funnel there as well. And uh, yeah, all this is meant is the Super Dragons have trailed behind the King, trailed behind the Queen and not really had the opportunity to open up and add too much value to the attack. <sighs> yeah, we live and learn though, guys. We live and learn. So Super Dragons are working the way through. We've got a freeze spell that gets dropped onto the air defense and archer tower. One Super Dragon caught in a nado. Air Scalies, we're going to hold it in place, but a, a heroic Super Dragon saved the day. And unfortunately here, guys, you can see we're just losing Super Dragons really, really quickly. So we're down to just three Super Dragons left. We've got another one moving in towards the Warden and Archer Tower. And we've already talked about the damage that a Warden can do to one of those Super Drags. It went down so quick, it didn't even get a shot off. Nasty. Nasty, nasty business. So we've got three Super Dragons working the way up. We've got 24 seconds to go. Now you tell me guys, is this a time fail or is this a fail fail? Let me know what you think. What do you think? It's looking really tough to call at this point. Well, it's not really, is it? It's not really. You can see they've moved in towards the warden. The RC is firing away. The RC is going to go down and we get a time fail. It's a time fail, guys. So we come in with a 93% time fail. So another plus 30. But uh, just rip to me, guys. Rip to me. I'm just glad we haven't had another 99% one star. So I can't be too disappointed. Now for our final legend here. This one's on Wally from Dreams. So where do we send that blimp? So I'm looking at it now. And I'm looking at the obvious place for it is... I mean, obviously it's where I chose, of course, but it's going to be the Dark Elixir storage. Now, that means an ambitious blimp. Ambitious, ambitious, ambitious. Does it make it? Does it make it? It does make it, guys. It does. So that blimp gets exactly where we want it. And look at the potential value right there. That is just madness. It's absolute madness that that's been allowed to happen. So the Super Archers firing off in all directions. They finally get fixed onto the Town Hall. At least one of them does. Another one. Okay, now we're getting a bit more concentrated fire onto the Town Hall. We get a scatter shot down. Do we get the other scatter? No, we do not. We do not. But one scatter shot down, the Town Hall gun as well. I'm calling that a success. I'm calling that a big win. Okay, so King drops in over at 11, we've got the Queen in behind, and we're just looking to try and filter our way down towards 9 o'clock here. Weird CC choice from uh, Wally. So we've seen a Super Dragon defensive CC, now we're seeing the old Pekka Ice Golem Giant CC, which is something that you would have typically taken in, I don't know, maybe a Wall Wrecker before Blimps even came out. Which, uh, yeah, interesting choice there, Wally. I wonder how long he's had that defensive CC. Anyway, king and queen working their way down. The queen is going to move in with the king eventually. King still has his ability. I'm trying to not use it until that bomb tower goes down. And there we go. Bomb tower's gone. King ability goes off. RC joins them. And we're going for a triple hero charge in 
to the nine o'clock side. That means that we've got a really good run for these Super Dragons to follow. Now that air defense over on the 10 o'clock side, a little bit rough, but because I dropped the Super Dragons in where I did, my intention was, or my hope was, to drive the Queen up towards the air defense, and it worked. The RC also went there too, which is not what I was hoping for. Ideally, the RC would have stayed with the Super Dragons just because of this air defense right here. I wanted that gone just because of the potential damage it can cause to my dragons. We've got the RC going down to the king over at the top. The king's kind of isolated, so where he is at the moment, he's not really going to cause us too much in the way of slowdown. Minion gets dropped in on the gold storage over at 1, and the Super Dragons and the Queen all working their way around the base, working together as a beautiful, beautiful team. And I think you can see that this one ain't going to fail, guys. There's nothing that can stop us now. We've got an overwhelming wave of Super Dragons working through. The Queen doesn't have ability, doesn't need it though. There's only one defense that can target her, and that's just been taken down by that massive Inferno from the Super Dragon. And we have a three star on Wally. Another 40 trophies. Now, I'm not going to lie, guys, that far surpassed anything that I thought I was going to get with that army. But plus 275 for the day. Honestly, really, really surprisingly good. I'm not going to say I could consistently do that every day. It's going to be very base dependent and it's going to be where you can find the right value for the Super Archers. You could say I got a bit lucky today or you could say that maybe the army is that good. I, I don't know. You, you guys decide. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to smash the like button. Also, drop a comment to let me know if you have tried this attack and if you've had any luck with it. Also, ask me if you've got any uh, advice that's needed too. I'm more than happy to help. And of course, if you don't already, please do subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to be made aware when I go live or when I post new videos in the future. I do one or the other pretty much every single day, so there's always fresh content on the channel. Until next time, much love. Big Veil is out.